Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you another example to solve a system of first order linear homogeneous differential equation by using the eigenvalue method where both eigenvalues are complex number. So in the last two videos, you saw that uh, the those uh, the real part of that complex number, right? So the real part of that complex number were negative and positive. Okay. So what did we saw there? So when the uh, when lambda is equals to mu plus i nu are the two complex i plus minus lambda plus i nu are the two complex values of the matrix A, right? If mu is negative, then you see that the solution curve converges or a solution curve goes to zero zero that means zero zero is stable right if mu is positive then the solution curve will go away from zero that will be zero zero will be unstable now we want to see what will happen if that real part mu is zero if that real part mu is zero in that case lambda will be just plus minus i nu that will be just purely imaginary uh, eigenvalues right so what will happen if a matrix has those kind of eigenvalues that's the that's the example that I'm going to discuss here okay guys so what is the matrix A matrix A is uh, 2 negative 5 1 negative 2 right how do I find out the characteristic equation characteristic equation is lambda square minus the trace is the sum of those 0 lambda plus the determinant is 2 times negative 2 is negative 4 and then minus minus one times negative five is negative five right equals to zero so what do you get you get lambda square plus one equals to equals to uh, zero right if you solve this this implies lambda square equals to negative one so what do you get lambda equals to plus minus i right if you take the square root on both sides you get plus minus i so now what i want to do is i want to take lambda equals to plus i and find the eigenvalues for lambda equals to i what do you get you get a v equals to lambda v implies a is 2 negative 5 and then 1 negative 2 and then v is let's say v1 v2 right and equals to i times this is also v1 v2 you see that so if you multiply these two matrices you will get 2 v1 minus 5 v2 equals to i v1 similarly 1 v1 minus 2 v2 equals to i v2 so what i want to do here i want to uh i want to solve this for i want to just just group v1 and v2 right so what do you get you get v1 equals to 2 plus i v2 right if you set v1 equals to uh sorry v2 equals to 1 then you get v1 equals to what 2 plus i okay hence the eigenvector is hence the eigenvector v is v1 v2 that will be uh, 2 plus i and then 1 this is what you get for the uh, for lambda equals to i this is the eigenvector so what i'm going to do here is i'm writing similarly Similarly, for lambda equals to negative i, the eigenvector v will be the conjugate of that. That will be 2 minus i and then 1. This is what you get. Okay, guys. Now, the idea here is, hence the solution are, so the solutions are, so the solutions are, for lambda equals to i, what is the solution? x let's denote by x and the superscript 1 is equals to e to the lambda t means i t and then the vector is 2 plus i 2 minus uh, sorry 2 plus i and then 1 right 1 and then for the other one we denote by x 2 that is e to the negative i t right and then 2 minus i and then 1 these are the solutions okay now what i want to do next is i want to write this solution in terms of u plus iv form okay just just simplify this and then write u plus iv form how do i do that it is this e to the it is euler's formula is cosine t plus i sine t right and what is there inside there so 2 plus i and then 1 
so I'm just taking the first one and similarly you can do the second one okay so what do you do you just multiply that 2 cosine of t okay plus i cosine of t plus 2i sine t and then plus i square sine t that is the foiling of the first with the first one and the second will be cosine t plus i sine t sine t times 1 will be just that one okay so let us group the terms without i and with i so what you get there is 2 cosine of t minus sine t plus i times what is that cosine t plus 2 sine t that's what you get and there is cosine t plus i times sine t is the second component you see that so you can separate them as 2 cosine t minus sine t and then cosine t this is one matrix plus i times that will be u plus iv right cosine t plus 2 sine t and then sine t so this is in the form of u plus i w okay guys so what i'm going to write here is sim this is for uh this is for x uh this is for x1 right this is for x1 this is the first solution so what i'm going to do next is similarly similarly x vec the second uh, the the solution corresponding to the second eigenvalue and eigenvector will be you can write u minus i w the same u n uh, u n w okay guys now what i'm going to do is because our goal is to find out the general solution you need to find out the ron skin and then make sure that the ron skin is not zero to write down the general solution okay if the ron skin is not zero then these solutions are called the fundamental set of solution and then c1 u plus c2 w will be the general solution okay also i'm going to write the ron skin of u and w is equals to just put that u vector is uh let me write down i may not have enough space there so what i'm going to do here is 2 cosine t 2 cosine t minus sine t and then that one was cosine of t the second component right for this one you get cosine t plus 2 sine t cosine t plus 2 sine t and then here it will be sine t okay and then a straight line there okay guys and then you get that straight line there all right so what do you do next is basically just this is the determinant so uh so you multiply that right so you get 2 sine t cosine t minus sine square t because this times that minus minus cosine t times cosine t will be cosine square t and then minus uh, minus cosine t times 2 sine t will be 2 sine t cosine square t right uh, sorry cosine t not cosine square cosine t now what you can do there is you can you can cancel 2 sine t cosine t positive and negative you will get negative sine square t plus cosine square t that is basically 1 so negative 1 which is non zero so x1 and then x2 are the fundamental set of solution what is the general solution hence hence the general solution general solution is you get x vector equals to c1 u plus c2 w let me write down these are the vectors right and then this x is function of t this u and w are also function of t let me write down that form that is x vector t is equals to c1 what is u 2 cosine t minus sine t and cosine of t plus c2 and then that vector cosine t cosine t plus 2 sine t right and then a sine t so you write the parenthesis there right now using what is our initial condition initial condition is given as x0 is 3 2 right x0 equals to 3 2 what do you get because since the initial value problem initial condition is given you want to find out the value of c1 and c2 what do you get you get 3 2 is equals to c1 if you plug in x equals to 0 what do you get you get 2 and then 0 and then this is 1 and then plus c2 times if you plug in that you will get 1 and then 0 
see that so if you simplify that you get 3 2 equals to 2 c1 plus c2 and then c1 plus c2 is just 0 now if you solve this you'll get c1 equals to 2 c1 equals to 2 right what do you get for c2 if you put c1 equals to 2 you'll get 3 equals to 4 plus c2 and c2 will be 1 right c2 will be negative 1 that's what you get so let us write down that solution uh, with the value of c1 and c2 what do you get uh, let us write down the general solution with that updated values of c1 and c2 hence you can write hence hence you can see that vector x of t you can write is equals to what do you get c1 is 2 2 and then write down 2 cosine of t minus sine t and then cosine of t right and then plus c2 is negative 1 so you write minus there right so minus 1 times c2 is and you write that thing right so cosine t plus 2 sine t and then sine t this is what you get now if you simplify that you you can basically distribute that 2 and then negative sign there and then you can combine those two matrices what do you get 4 cosine t minus 2 sine t right what is the xt it is like x1 x2 right and then minus cosine of t minus 2 sine of t and then 2 cosine t minus sine t that's what you get right so which is same as you can think what is that 4 cosine t minus cosine t will be 3 cosine of t and minus 2 2 sine t minus 2 sine t will be minus 4 negative 4 sine t right and then there is 2 cosine of t minus sine of t this is the very last solution this the top one is for x1 the bottom one is for x2 but the question is asking you need to plot the individual solution and then see what happens when t tends to infinity right so if you plot this with that if you plot this function and then and then uh, and then that function what do you get let us let us plot the first one first so i basically you can use calculator to plot this no problem but what i used here is i used the uh, so I used uh, I used MATLAB to do that. What did I do here is I basically uh, I basically took the t equals to negative 15 to 15, and I defined x1 is 3 cosine t minus 4 sine t, and x2 is 2 cosine t minus sine t, and then I'll just plot t versus uh, t versus x1 and t versus x2. I'm just plotting both. Okay. So what do you see here? If you uh, let me let me go over that so what is t uh, let me let me actually let me do hold on let me do and then uh what is t so uh what i want to do is so i'm defining t is t is between negative 15 and 15 that means i want to plot between negative 15 and positive 15 so i have i typed x1 is equals to 3 cosine t minus 4 sine t that's what we got for x1 and i am typing x2 as well so x2 will be 2 cosine t minus sine t did you see that that's what we had right for x1 and x2 so what i'm going to do next is i want to plot the uh the value of the value of the 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 x1 and x2 versus t so x axis is the t and then one curve this the first blue curve is x1 and then the red curve is x2 okay guys you see that the solution when you go to extreme left or extreme right for any value of t it looks like the both of the solution are fluctuating right it, with certain amplitude it's like constant fluctuation constant amplitude there you see that so it is basically not going to zero right it is fluctuating around zero it is going up and down up and down up and down it is fluctuating around zero but it is not going anywhere there so it is just just kind of uh, just staying there forever right so it's staying there forever so if you want to plot what it looks like x1 versus x2 okay so if you plot 
X1 versus X2, this is how it looks like. You see the circular thing? Okay, so whenever the, uh, the real part of the uh, whenever the real part of the eigenvalues in the complex eigenvalue case is zero, then you see a circular case when you plot x1 versus x2. It will be a circle, okay? And uh, you can see that from the, uh, you can see that from the direction field too. You, all those, yeah, the pointed line will be circling around, okay? So we call this as a center, okay? This type of situation we call as a center all right guys and then when we plot we saw that let me let me first plot that we saw that it was like so with the same amplitude and then when you did the other one then you got so you see that it is not going it is not getting to zero or it is not going blowing away from zero it is just staying around zero fluctuating right so and then if you plot x versus y so the x1 versus x2 then this is the circle you get with that initial condition right which is going through three comma two so three comma two maybe somewhere here is going passing through that right so if you have another initial condition then it will look like that like four comma three it will look like that or one comma one may look like that right so uh, basically it is giving you the circle all right so let me show you how it looks like look at this whenever oh, by the way this is not the one that i i entered so let me enter the very first matrix there so the very first matrix is 2x minus 5y 2x minus 5y okay and then the second matrix was one my x minus two y x minus two y okay if you do that look at that so if you if you uh enter so if you so you see that it is going like this and then coming it is like a little bit slanted but it is going like that right i mean when you draw that uh let me do that uh let me do three comma two three comma two two and if you submit it look at this this is a so i mean it is not exactly like this because we saw using the matlab that it was not going away it looks like it is going away but it is not because there is some always there is some error right so what you see is it is it will be a circle it will be an exact circle that it should meet there okay so this is how it looks like because i showed you using the uh i showed you using the uh let me let me run that again i showed you using the matlab that whenever you plot x1 versus x2 in that initial uh, condition um, i mean i plot the solution there and then i got a perfect uh, i got a circle but it is like a little bit slanted there right so we call this is this is the center meaning that it is circling around the zero zero or or zero zero is the center you can think that way okay so zero zero is the center zero zero is the center okay we call that center and we call that in this situation we call stable zero zero is stable center okay stable center so what are the idea then so what how can we summarize that is what you can think is for uh, the eigenvalues uh, mu plus i nu, if the eigenvalues are mu plus minus i nu, then if mu is greater than zero, then unstable. If the real part is uh, greater than zero, if mu is less than zero, stable, right? But if we call spiral in, right? Spiral in, right? Like this, going towards that. And this is spiral out, right? So it is going away, spiral out. And if mu equals to zero, it is a center, right? It is just going around, circling around. That's so, so zero, zero is the center. So we call center, but we call stable center. Stable center. Okay? So this is how we do uh, the uh, stability. Uh, we find the solution and check the stability of the, uh, of the origin in the case of pair of uh, the pair of ODEs, uh, ho linear homogeneous ODEs, right? Uh, uh, linear homogeneous ODEs with complex eigenvalues. Uh, e and if uh, the uh, the eigenvalue has the real part, 
zero okay so i want to do one more example that is not this long though don't worry about the length here because it, it will be very short example so what i'm going to do here is one of the problem from the book what it says is find the eigenvalue so let me do it is question number 13 from the book okay so we have x prime equals to another example so we have x prime equals to uh x prime equals to alpha 1, alpha 1, and then uh, negative 1, alpha, okay, and then vector x. So what you need to do is you need to find out the eigenvalues in terms of alpha, okay, uh, and then um, uh, you need to you need to mention what sign of alpha will give what thing that that kind of thing, right? So what sign of alpha will give you or uh, the origin or zero zero uh, stable or unstable or or center okay so you want to do that and then also uh, you want to draw the uh, phase portrait okay uh, with um, with the uh, slightly below and slightly above values of that 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 critical critical number or, or basically zero zero right so slightly above or slightly below zero so okay let us find out the first find out number I is find eigenvalues so here a is equals to alpha 1, negative 1, alpha, right? What is the characteristic equation? Characteristic equation is lambda squared minus 2 alpha times lambda, right? Plus it will be what? Uh, the determinant will be alpha squared and then minus negative 1 times 1 is negative 1, so plus 1. So it will be alpha squared plus 1 equals to uh, equals to zero, right? So how do I solve this for lambda? Lambda is two alpha negative b plus minus b square is four alpha square minus four a is alpha square. Sorry, a is one one times alpha square plus one. You see that? And divide by two. So what do you get? Two alpha plus minus. Uh, you got four alpha square minus four alpha square minus four. You see that? and divide by what? Divide by 2. So what do we do? That is equals to 2 alpha plus minus. How much do you get? You cancel this and that and then you get negative 4 under the root. That will be 2i over over 2. So if you simplify, if you split the denominator, you will get alpha plus and minus i. So that is lambda values. That is the eigenvalues, right? So what can we say about the uh, stability of the uh, origin here is uh, so the next thing you want to do is um, find the critical value or the value of or values of alpha where the qualitative nature okay so number b is if alpha is less than zero then zero zero will be is what stable right stable that is spiral in because if the real part is uh, if the real part is negative, if alpha is negative, then zero zero will be stable. Then you will see the situation of the spiral in. Okay, if alpha is positive, then zero zero will be unstable. We call it spiral out, right? Spiral out. Okay, and if alpha equals to zero, then you get zero zero is stable right we call center so these are the scenarios that you you see there okay guys now and the next one is what it is saying is it is saying uh, let's say uh, what it was saying is on part c on part c the question is asking uh, this is the qualitative the part b was asking the qualitative behavior and part c is asking uh, the direction field with alpha little greater than zero and alpha little less than zero and then c okay so what you want to do is i want to take alpha equals to let's say uh, one half okay and i want to take alpha equals to negative one half and then c okay guys so let me do uh, that direction field thing so what i want to do is if you if i take alpha equals to one half what do you get you get one half x plus y right because this is like 
this is if you take a vector x is equal to x y you will get alpha x plus uh, one y that is uh, alpha is one half so one half x plus y and second one is negative x okay and then plus one half one over two y if you do that what do you get look at that look at this this is spiral uh, spiral out right meaning that when alpha is positive then origin is basically the spiral uh, i mean the the solution curve will spiral out right that means what that means the solution that that means the zero zero the origin is unstable you see so when alpha is positive it is unstable and when alpha is negative meaning like, let's take alpha is negative one half so that will make that this is negative one half and this one is also negative one half look at this what do you get you get that it is spiral in look at this it is going to the origin right it is spiraling it is spiral in basically all right so in that case it is spiral in so what i want to do here is so alpha equals to negative one half i want to draw one thing and alpha equals to positive one half i want to draw the other thing so if you take zero you will get just a center okay so uh, i want to draw that and then how that look like is for negative one half it was going like it was going like like that for the positive one half it was going out like this right and then let us try if it is center how would that look like meaning that if that first term is zero just remove that because that will be zero and then that one half term will be zero uh, that that's what you, it is right look at that this is the perfect kind of circular right it doesn't show perfect circle but it must be a perfect circle okay because there is some always some little error on on that software just the uh, I mean in uh, because you know that because this this uh, is using the numerical methods uh, numerical method always have a little bit of tiny bit of like error there so let me clear that and then see that how you can see that all of them are circling around right you see that but it shows like going away it is not really going away it must be a circle meet with that okay guys so whenever uh, the uh, and again whenever the real part is zero so whenever alpha equals to zero then you get a circle okay you get a circle like this all right so circle like this all right so this is how we solve the pair of ODE or the second order ODE you can change it to the pair of first order linear homogeneous ODE and then uh, solve that when there is a complex eigenvalues.